Hello, Oracles. Well, the Tesla stock buying opportunity window continues. So as we talked about last night, looks like there could be a potential fire sale coming for Tesla. And looking at it this morning, we are pushing down just below $270 at the time of this recording. So for me, I am going to be adding more today. I'm very excited for this, something that we have been talking about on here as a potential going forward, something I've been waiting for in my IRA. I have a buy set up over there at $250. And in my main account, I have a lot of cash put on the sidelines, just waiting to be able to take advantage of this opportunity. Don't know for sure if we're gonna hit it, but we are trending in that direction. So when you're looking at reasons why maybe the market is down even more this morning after being down for four days in a row, well, last night after hours, we had gotten news from NVIDIA that they will no longer be allowed to export chips, their A100 and H100 chips over to China. This is just going to increase the tensions between the US and China. And when it comes down to it, it's a lot of this uncertainty. And we look at the market and we're like, well, why is the market red? What is going on? It's the uncertainty and the unknown. And having tensions is uncertain. You know, we don't know what is going on. Why are we doing this way? Why is the market pulling down? What does this mean for NVIDIA? What does this mean for AMD? What does this mean for Tesla? What does this mean for all the other companies that are in the stock market dealing with any sort of chips and stuff over in China? What about any other companies that are over in China that get a majority of the revenue from there? All of these questions are just what is going to lead to the market being red. And when you have more questions than answers, you tend to get a very red market. That's where we are right now. Think back, you know, months and months ago, right before the Ukraine-Russia war started, we didn't know what was going on. There were tensions, there was uncertainty. The market was red, red, red. Historically, you look at wars and it's usually red right before the war starts. And then when the war starts, the market goes green again. It's not the bad news itself that is what causes the market to go red. It is the uncertainty. The fact that you have more questions than answers. Are we going to go to war? That causes the market to go red. We are at war. Okay, now we know what's going on. The market can go green. That's just the way the market works. So right now we're in a situation where we're asking questions. Well, is this NVIDIA thing going on over in China going to actually affect more of the market? More questions. Other questions we have coming up. What is inflation looking like? As we get closer to CPI, we have more questions. What is the Fed going to do with interest rates? More questions. So when you're looking at the market and overall macro sentiment, just take a quick look and scan and say, how many questions are there and how many answers do we have for those questions? If there's more questions than answers, you can bet that there's most likely going to be red in the market. And so for me, the way I view it all is, I'm a long-term Tesla investor. I do have some other stocks in my portfolio, nothing major. The majority of my portfolio is in Tesla at 66%, aiming for 69%. But what I do is I look at the long-term and I say, all right, I have strong conviction that Tesla is going to do extremely well in the future. For me, in my personal scenario, I don't have as many shares as I would like in Tesla. So for me, I wanna add as many as possible. In order for me to add more, and I can't add a lot because I don't have a lot of money going in, I would like the price to be lower. So the lower the price is, the more I can add. So it's not that I'm looking for the stock price to come down. I don't want the company to fail. I think the company is going to do extremely well. So if I can buy the stock for a lower price and get more bang for my buck, that is huge for me. So I pay attention to things like this. So when the entire market has a lot of questions and we are trending down, I'm gonna be excited and buy some more because that means I can get even more shares for even less. This is my excitement. We've got Chicken Genies coming out thinking that the market is going to pull back significantly and Tesla's going to fall to 140. I don't see that, at least not yet. He's a very smart guy, so maybe he sees things that I don't. But for right now, at least in the near term, I do think we are going to pull down and fill that $247 gap and hit that $245 support level. At that point, I will determine if I think we're going to go further down. You know, it's just a matter of where is the market sentiment going to be at that point, because it's not really Tesla re related at this point. Tesla specific news right now is positive. It's the macro and Tesla, unfortunately, at the moment is just trending with the macro. So following the macro, you'll be able to follow Tesla. And when I'm looking long term as far as where Tesla is growing in the future versus the competition that's coming, 
Thinking about how Tesla is expanding, they are still expanding into markets that they have never been in before. They just started doing deliveries over to Singapore yesterday. They just got into Australia last month. So looking at the fact that a couple of years ago, GM started pulling out of Australia because they weren't profitable over there. GM is shrinking. They are pulling themselves out of certain countries. Ford over the last decade has shrunk their entire company down to go just into their niche market. They're doing very well with that niche market and they are converting that over to EVs, but they still have shrunk themselves down over the last decade. GM on a global basis is shrinking themselves down. It's just what's happening. Meanwhile, Tesla is expanding to all of these markets and they're expanding at a profitable rate. So when Tesla is expanding and they're profitable while expanding, meanwhile, other companies are shrinking, that just gives me even more conviction for the future of Tesla. And so being able to buy at these lower prices as we trend down just makes me even more excited. So another thing too that I wanted to mention, and I had talked about it yesterday with China and their delivery wait times going down to one to four weeks, um, James Stevenson and Rob Maurer both pointed out a very wise and brilliant uh, assessment and something that I had overlooked myself, which is, yes, it's coming down to one to four weeks in China for September. And I did mention it's because they focus on all of their domestic deliveries in that month. But then you go into October and they're going to focus more on exports because Berlin is not up to ramp pace yet. So those lead times will most likely extend going into, into October again. We will monitor this as we get into there, but these guys have been doing it longer than I have, so I apologize for not even thinking about that. But yes, it looks like most likely we get to October and those lead times will extend again. So, you know, I had another conversation with one of you in the comments about the fact that why would Tesla bring their prices down when they can't even keep up with demand right now? This is true, and you don't wanna do that Tesla doesn't want longer lead times as they already have right now when it's six to 12 months. But if their exponential ramp uh, for production is growing as it is, there's a point where they're going to hit and they know the numbers better than we know. So they're gonna hit that point and they're gonna know, all right, well, we're being able to exponentially ramp our production to be able to catch up with the demand. So because we're able to do that, now we can lower the prices down. So again, this comes down to the pricing power and the fact that they have this massive wiggle room to be able to really dictate what they want demand to be. So if a commodity prices are coming down and they can charge less for their vehicles, if they still see that demand is extremely high, they won't come down and they're just going to make more money on their vehicles. So instead of making 31 or 32% on their vehicles, they'll make 35 or 36%. Not a bad thing, I mean, but Elon does wanna bring prices down but they've got to play it with the demand. It's a great problem to have, so they're just gonna to have to deal with that and we'll see how they handle it over the course of the next few months. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What are you guys doing today if Tesla continues to dip down and the entire market continues to pull back? How much more will you be adding? Are you ready for this? I know we've been talking about it for months. I've been laying out here on this channel my plan, just saving up this cash, specifically saving up to 10% cash and more so that I could deploy a significant chunk of that into the stock as it pulls back to these levels. And we're getting to that point. So I don't know, again, it's not financial advice and that, you know, I'm not saying this because I think you guys should do it, but I know some of you have been following along with this plan. So let me know if you've been ready for it and how, uh, how much you're looking forward to getting down to these prices to add a lot heavier. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. I am over on Twitter at OracleTim1. I share all the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. We do have a Discord chat, that link is down in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel any further, we do have a Patreon, that link is also in the description. Thank you so much, have a great one.